It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another tutorial. Now, if you're looking for ways to earn passive income through DeFi, then you're watching the wrong video. You should be watching this one. But if you've already gotten up to speed with DeFi, then you'll know I didn't include yield farming in that film as we were looking specifically at conservative strategies designed to return a steady but unspectacular percentage on your initial investment. Now, since it became popular in the great DeFi summer, yield farming has done the exact opposite. It's volatile and it's spectacular. Yes, it is passive income if passive was mainlining a cocktail of Red Bull and lighter fluid while base jumping from an active volcano. But for the uninitiated, it can look absurdly complicated. A gazillion token variants with weird names and strange user interfaces mostly featuring some type of food. In essence, you plant seeds, they grow into something new, and you harvest the crop. And then you relax in a warm bath of agricultural memes. DeFi is the gift that keeps on giving, ain't it? So this week, we're taking a relative step backwards to help you get started in some good, honest work. Now, firstly, yield farming is not trading. The game is actually providing assets that would otherwise be sitting idle in your wallet. The yield itself can come in the form of interest, liquidity, provider fees, and protocol rewards. And protocols live and die by the liquidity they can attract to power interactions. And users are given a whole range of incentives to provide it. And that's where you, humble farmer, can take advantage. By shifting your collateral to where the yield is highest, you can earn LP fees, staking rewards, simple interest, governance tokens, and a whole bunch of additional spec speculative assets. You also get to play the gas fee lottery and spend lots of time swearing at your computer, shrieking at the unfairness of impermanent loss, and cursing the high price of transactions publicly on Twitter. But this is, is the, the way. way. Now, there are many strategies to consider, and yes, it's risky, heady stuff. So this video will run you through the essentials to give you a head start when you don your plaid and overalls. Yes, it's Tutorial Tuesday. Okay, so let's make this simple. You, as a farmer, have one job, providing liquidity to a pool. But to do so, there are four steps to go through. First, you need Ethereum in your DeFi wallet. Second, you're gonna need a farming strategy. Third, you need to obtain the required assets for your farm of choice. And four, start farming and collect that fat yield. Now, if you've been watching these series, I'm gonna assume that you do already know how to get ETH and transfer it to your wallet. And if you don't own any ETH yet, you are gonna have a hard time participating in any ETH-based economies, but we'll take a look at some of the non-ETH yield farms popping up, like PancakeSwap on Binance Smart Chain, in a future video, as they're actually much, much cheaper. But if you are watching this, chances are you do already know your way around wallets and exchanges, so let's jump to step two. Now, the best way to go about developing a farming strategy starts by visiting CoinGecko. Here, we're going to hit the Markets category on the main tab to find farms. So there's a lot to digest here, but right off the bat, we see AVA on number one on the list. Further down the row, we see the pool, and for AVA, this is the AVA staking. So this pool will generate protocol rewards in return for staking and providing your AVA assets, which is also mentioned in the next row under collateral. And so final note, this farm is currently boasting an estimated 5.86% yearly returns, and that's otherwise known as the APY. Now, it's not much of a comparison with you know, the 1,000% APYs from the DeFi summer, but at least we can be reasonably confident that AVA won't rug pull. Uh, nonetheless, to participate in this pool, the first thing I'm gonna need to do is obtain some AVA, and that brings us to step three in the tutorial. Now, there are a few different ways to obtain AVA, so what we're gonna do is click on AVA here in CoinGecko to see what options it provides. And then we look for the Markets tab, and as you can see, there are a hundred different ways to obtain AVA here. It's a very liquid market across lots of different exchanges, but I'm gonna to stick to the DEX options and exchange using Uniswap. So now I head over to Uniswap, and here I'm gonna swap my desired ETH amount into AVA. So we're in the last step now, it's time to farm. So let's head over to the app.ava.com forward slash staking site and hit stake AVA. So we're gonna enter the amount we'd like to stake and hit stake. And then on the right-hand side of the page, the app provides all sorts of information about how much AVA you have staked, the amount of AVA you will earn per month, and it will tell you about the cooldown period, which is 10 days. Now, this one's important. The cooldown period refers to the duration it takes for you to receive your staked AVA tokens after withdrawing them. And why is it not immediate, you ask? Well, the 10-day period acts as a kind of safety module so the network isn't disrupted when a large amount of tokens are unstaked. 
Next, the APY is mentioned, and we also saw this on CoinGecko. And then finally, we've got the slashing. Now, stake slashing acts as a security mechanism for the protocol, and it occurs in the event of a shortfall, which is kind of what happened when MakerDAO saw tons of liquidity just exit the market, and they got into real trouble for that. So slashing is designed to mitigate that. So in this situation, you could lose a maximum of 30% of your staked tokens, which sounds horrible, but it doesn't really happen very often. Now, previously, AVA holders could state their AVA in the protocol safety module and earn safety incentives in exchange for securing the protocol. And safety incentives were set at 400 AVA per day to be distributed among all the stakers. But no stake slashing was activated during this initial phase, so AVA holders were not at risk of losing any of their stake. They were just getting a bunch of rewards. However, AIP7, which is the AVA improvement proposal 7, has passed, and in that, they activated stake slashing. And that means if there's a shortfall event, up to 30% of the AVA staked in the safety module can be slashed to cover the deficit. Now, AVA stakers are taking a risk to protect the protocol and therefore rewarded with safety incentives. So the AIP7 also proposed that the safety incentives increase from 400 AVA per day to 550 AVA per day to be distributed among all stakers so that the reward stakers get reflects the additional responsibility they have now that slashing is activated. And the last thing you're thinking, of course, is when harvest. Well, you decide on that. Providing liquidity to AVA will reward you with STK AVA tokens, and this is basically their version of the LP tokens that you might have heard of in relation to yield farming on other protocols. And when withdrawing your STK AVA tokens, the STK, or the staked part, gets burned, and you receive AVA at the end of the cooldown period. Now, yield farming can mean many things. It comes in different shapes and flavors. And today we staked AVA to earn protocol rewards, but you can also use AVA to lend out ETH, which also has its own rewarding mechanism. But it can get even beefier. You can also stake sushi to earn X sushi, then deposit and lend that into AVA to earn APY as well. So that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give us a like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and we will see you on the next one for another round of tutorial goodness. See you then. Peace.